I'm talking relationships Worth more than money No time for the fig or the phony Tweezy jump the gym It's so evident Link up with the game I'm talking relationships Sync it up, edit man Yes, sir Whoever that is Gonna be mad that I just said that <laughs> Yeah. He can be like, edit, man. Edit, nah, man. I, I, I edit podcasts, too. Shout out to Rolling, man. Shout out to Rolling. Rolling. Yeah. Rolling. Rolling. Park Got Fest. It. My dog. Rolling's the man. But, man, look. <clears throat> man, I got to cool off. Yeah. Kids screaming, yelling. Shit. Yep. Couldn't even hear him in the noise gate. Can't hear nothing. Yeah. But yeah. they are screaming and yelling. Yes, yeah, sir. They're supposed to be sleep. You said Glenn Levitt? Yeah. Cheers to that. Cheers, bro. 1884. Yes, sir. Mm. Damn, I'm already spilled. Here we go. Man, look at here. It's all good. So, man, look, we in a new location, a new vibe. This is what I, I planning on doing anyways in 2024. It's not only just getting out the apartment, but moving around and, and getting close to my homies. You know what I mean? And not even homies, but other people out there, because you know what I'm saying? I'm interviewing every... Won't they all be your homies after that, though? Huh? Won't they all be your homies? Yeah, they all be the homies. Okay. Yeah, they all be the homies. <laughs> yeah, they all be the homies. But man, yes, this is Relationships Worth More Than Money podcast. It's 70 degrees in my studio right now. And it's 39 outside. And I'm dying. Because <laughs> I'm it's fat. It's 39 <laughs> outside. And yeah, man, Um, how can I, how can I introduce this guy, man? Because literally... From day one, soon as soon as Esquire was like, "Yo, hit up Ben, yeah, hit up Ben, bro," like he he uh he's in the area. Yep, he was like, "Hit up Ben, bro. We we definitely got to hit up Ben, get some collabs in. Let's work." And every time I've always came around or hit you up, it's always been welcome with open arms, man. All day. Guy from Philly. No, I lived in Philly. You lived in Philly. I'm from Chicago. Oh yeah, Midwest. Yep. How, how could I forget? Oh, Minnesota. Huh? Pop, not soda. Pop. Yes. <laughs> Say it again. Pop, not Pop, soda. Pop, not soda. You hear me? <laughs> yeah. So, so, but, but the connections in Philly was crazy. Cause yeah. I remember you, you had oh, your, yeah, yeah. you had I your man come of, down. Of, yeah. And we built the uh, studio together, man. But, um, great father, incredible producer, um, Navy? Uh, civilian. Civilian, but you work with the Navy. Was. Was. Yeah. yeah now you, Kinda now you contracting. We leave that alone. But we leave that alone? Yeah. All right. But this <laughs> guy to my left. <laughs> guy to my left. My man's. Yeah. Ben Ford. What's going on? Did you hear the drum roll? I felt like Cat right there. You know, <laughs> all the intro. You know, he he ran to the top of the mountain. Yeah. Caught the music and the vibes. Brought it down back to the people of the world. <laughs> mm. Nah, man. You seen that podcast? Yeah, that podcast was crazy. 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 I Did like you it, see though. the second one? Yeah, with uh, Willie D. With Willie D. Yep. Yeah, it was I watched that crazy. one yesterday. Yeah, he's trying to get some. He's trying to get some views. <laughs> yeah, he definitely trying. <laughs> he got. Cause... He got. I think he got like three million, but he ain't get that. He ain't 42. get that. Shay Shay, that club Shay Shay. Forty two million. Wait, no, club Shay Shay. Yeah, not Willie D. No, yeah, club yeah. Shay Shay. Forty two. Yeah, yeah, club Shay Shay. Forty two. Thirty. That, when he did the Willie D was joint, 15. I think it was yeah. On day one. Yeah, man. I was like, and, and the, the algorithm was like, you need to watch this black person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like. I'm going to watch it. Yeah, it, it, it was definitely worth it, man. I liked it, man, just off the simple fact, like, everybody has their truth yeah. or everybody feels a way. And, I mean, the receipts kept coming out. It's crazy because some of the stuff that he said, though I have no connection to any of those folks. Yeah. Like, there's some stuff that you do notice when you're in the industry that you like, hmm. Yeah. Maybe I wasn't crazy. Right. I'll give you an example. We were at uh, this bowling alley in L.A., mm -hmm. me and my homeboy, and some pretty famous people came in. Yeah. And, you know, they came in with their little entourage, and they had their two little light-skinned girls. They weren't ugly. I don't, you know, Cat was on the bullshit. Did they look the same? They both looked the same. Mm -hmm. We had a bowling alley. They didn't say one word. At the bowling alley? One word. They just sat there. Just sat there. I was like, I mean, I'm over here having fun. Mm -hmm. I said something to them. They ain't saying nothing back to me. I'm like, damn. Okay, yeah. either I'm lame as fuck. Yeah, you know? or they control. Or I don't know if they was controlled. They yeah. ain't controlled. Like, that's, I don't know. People do what they want to do. But people know how to act to right. stay in the 
in the in the graces of the people they want right, to stay in. Right. Stay in the in the in crowd. Right. So yeah, yeah it, it it the Cat Williams joint, that was crazy. Yeah. Like, I wish I was like a fly on the wall at any of them times. Like, could you imagine being at the Friday? Just even I, even if I was the gaffer, just yeah. gaffing for next Friday. So yeah. the IMDB says, gaffer, bid for it. That would right. be crazy, bro. Man, and, and it's and it's crazy because I always wonder, like, why hasn't another one came out? You know what I mean? Wait, but wait, Friday, Friday after next. Yeah, because they, they remember they were supposed to do another well, one. Well, what's his face passed away though? Yeah. That happened, and what's then I, uh, uh, John Witherspoon. Yeah, yeah, you can't, pops, you can't, you can't do it without yeah, pops. You gotta have you pops, gotta have there, pops. Man. But um, I think Chris Tucker had back backed off of it too. But it was like, yo, they was trying to get everybody in it. You know what I'm saying? That would have so, been crazy. Yeah. So I I don't know, man. I I, I still look forward to it. But um, let's get let's get to the history of of how it all started with you. Oh, for me. Yeah. So I've been uh, submerged in music music. Since I was born, my parents were both musicians. Uh, my mom toured. My my dad he played bass and did a bunch of stuff. Um, she but she was in jazz. My mom was in jazz. So and then she was a she had a music school that she ran. So every Saturday, you know where I was. So right, but for a long time, I didn't really understand that I could record this stuff. You know, so I'm just there playing music, playing drums, playing piano, playing. Saxophone, trying the bass. I'm good at the bass now. Not so good at the saxophone. Like, I think I gave my brother-in-law my saxophone the other week. Like, he was like, yeah, I play sax. I'm like, word play. He was like, oh. So. Did he play? No. Oh, okay. But he did take the sax. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully. He's going to learn. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. about to put him in a booth, you know? Yeah. See what it sounds like. At least make some samples, right? That's a fact, man. So. Can't but, go wrong um, with the loops. That was in Chicago. And, man, that was a long time. It was so fun. Like. There's so many people. I learned from a lot of different people. My mom, because she was in the jazz, mm-hmm. I got to deal with all the avant-garde people. Right. <laughs> like folks that will wear pants made of 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 uh quilts and stuff. And yeah. you know, like the super expressive. Yes, yeah. like all the way out there. Yeah. And smart as hell, probably got a PhD, mm-hmm. you know, and they just like, I'm just gonna make jazz. Yeah. I think the uh, the gate kind of heavy on me. <laughs> it heavy? It's a little heavy on me. Let me see. Check you out, man. Because that jig, I, I hit the jazz. Yeah, that yeah, motherfucker went out. That's it. it. Which is great. You know, that's what the gate's supposed to do for all those people out here. You know, the you gate. record into these things. They got preamps, probably a noise gate, probably an EQ, you know, compressor, I'm hoping. Yep. Yep. That's better? Yeah, that's way better. All right. So. That was the south side of Chicago mm-hmm. and north side. She she toured, like, the globe. There's videos of her doing it. And that was, like, my intro into, like, I like to play music. Right. Then my uncle had a studio upstairs. And I think he used to do, like, some voiceovers mm-hmm. um, for, for commercials. Right. And I used to just be up there playing. He had this program, <laughs> Cakewalk. Cakewalk. Right. Did you ever use Cakewalk? Man, I was just telling Shada, man, I... I bought it, man. I begged my mama. Man, I begged her to like to take me to uh it wasn't Guitar Center. Yeah. It was, I think it was like Sam Yo, Ash or something. You remember when Guitar Center used to have like all the rack gear and everything? Everything. You used to go to Guitar yeah. Center and they used to have the AVID, uh, the AVID monitors. You'd yeah. be like, dang, and the monitors, you remember the AVID monitors, they were like super skinny, but like two feet long. They're like, like Yo, yeah, you used to get all the old school, the old school monitors. Man, yeah. I used to get the little magazine and just flip through that thing. Like, man, yep. one day. We have a Vox box. Yep. Wishing. I had a Vox box last week. And what happened? I don't like it. Um, I keep my core. Mm. Yeah. Like, I actually had it in here. It was nice, but it was a little noisy for me. Yeah. It was a little noisy. That mat- matched with like the uh, the manly the mic. The manly. It just, it was, it's a, it was doing a lot. Yeah. Like, the manly by itself is crazy. Right. And I could that throw that is. through a Neve and be done with it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I have options. I got the Pacifica, the Neve, the manly. Core, which is right. all the best stuff of the box box. That's what they say. But I mean, of course, yeah. it's like dumbed down because it costs less. <laughs> hands, hands down, too. Hands down. This is the best setup. In home setup, I want to mimic mines off of. Because even when at your old crib, yeah, that basement, man, it was like, it was, I'm like, man, don't know about I'm like, your neighbors don't hear this? No. He like, no, nah, they don't hear nothing. Yeah. The, the bass, the app was everything was going crazy. And I'm like, this shit is fire. Yeah. So yeah, hands down, 
Now, what they don't see is this. So I built this cloud up here. This is a okay. diaphragmic cloud. Yeah. I was just telling my homeboy, uh, True Sounds on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I was telling him, he just moved down to Florida. I was telling him like, yeah, man, I built this diaphragmic bass trap. So yeah. it's like two different levels of material, uh, hard material in between. Then I put the lights in, the Wiz lights, so you can change the color whenever you want. Oh, yeah. Man, I brought that into this room, and the whole room changed. Now, technically, this room is a terrible room for making music. Right. So, you know, I can't, you know, it's a 13 by 13. Terrible. What's the what's the normal like 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 area you need? Like you want measurement. A, you want a larger room? There's mm -hmm. there's a, a list online that you can get to that kind of shows you what your room size should be based on your ceiling height. Okay. And you know, the larger the room, the better the sound you're gonna get because the waves have more time to mature, like your 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 um your 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 low frequency waves, which are much bigger, have a lot more time to mature. So like right. the the fuses that we're sitting behind right now, mm -hmm. those are for high frequency waves. Those are tuned to uh four hundred and above. Right. Right. Uh forty K. Sorry. Okay. Um so not forty K. Four hundred and above. I'm tripping. Yeah. Um but like they're not gonna defra they're not gonna diffuse anything low. And like low waves they can be huge. Like one 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 standing wave could be like nine feet. Damn. So if you got a room that's smaller than nine feet, that wave isn't gonna mature before it bounces on something and hits back and could come back to you and sound crazy. Right. I just went way too deep. Nah, but this <laughs> this is this is the crazy part about it though. Like when you be saying that, I be getting there tuned. Like, <laughs> remember when we was putting the, putting uh, the studio together, right. man, for the uh, for the disabled. Yeah, it was, the, it was yeah, disabled. The, um, they weren't disabled. They were. Um, it was a mental health. Mental health. Yeah, the mental uh, health uh, building. And we it was. Uh, and they wanted me to build a studio that was not going to be able to be torn apart. That yeah. was the key. He was like, look, the guys come in, they got mental health issues. Um, we need you to design a studio so that it's safe for them to be in as well as safe for the gear. Right. So I, I went through a whole list of stuff that I had to figure out, like, how can I make sure the computer is bolted down? Mm -hmm. So I ended up racking a Mac Mini inside of this crazy rack and then bolting that down and then the monitors had to be strapped down and it was crazy. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, but that... that <laughs> it sounded that, great, though. Yeah, it definitely did, man. And then you you cut out, you cut out a... Um, a window for the yeah. booth. Yeah, I did. Which booth. I thought that that was it, that was pretty dope. It was crazy because they wouldn't let me do too much construction because I wanted to do a double wall in there. Yeah, but their budget wasn't gonna allow for me to do a double wall, and then right. their space wasn't. They didn't want to do mm -hmm. that with that building. Yeah. So it was a single wall, and we did everything we could to isolate the sound. It yeah. wasn't soundproof, but right. it was good. So it was good enough. We treated the room. Yeah. We treat the room was treated pretty well though. Yeah, it definitely was. Let's let's uh now with the mom, yeah, and your I'm sorry, dad, we yeah, yeah, squirrel all over the place. Yeah, we good <laughs> with your mom and dad. Um, <clears throat> Ben's uh, musically just in it, like yeah. all the way into a jazz, and your dad playing the bass. Like, when did it like really click for you? As far as when you thought you okay, I can record what you saying with your uncle. All right, so my dad he did his thing right, mm -hmm. and but I was hanging with my uncle and everybody else. And right. my uncle was, he was like, hey, go upstairs, have fun. He had Cakewalk. We had all the, uh, all the uh, stock sounds. Right. And it's, Cakewalk wasn't like making beats like now. No. Like what we Nef do. It like, definitely wasn't. They, Cakewalk, when you got on Cakewalk, if you didn't know how to write music, you wasn't writing no music. At all. So I could read music and I'm like, oh, I could put this here. I can create a chord. There's middle C. I'm taking all the stuff and I'm just building out whatever I can with the stock sounds. They had some crazy sounds. And then I figured out how to sample in sounds too. Mm -hmm. So I got some, I don't even know where these sounds came from. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> the sounds that I had came from the Windows computer. Sound oh, folder. The sound so folder. So when it found the all the sound, yeah, the default yeah. sound. Well, it was hella sounds in there. Mm -hmm. Like, it was crazy. So it got to a point where I was making beats with those. And yeah. You know, I played football at the same time. So when we were warming up for football, they playing my beats over the day, the uh, the stadium while yeah. we were warming up. I'm like, damn, it's crazy, man. Yeah. So, but Cakewalk was where it started, and it ended quick because Cakewalk was. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. When I learned about Fruity Loops, <laughs> yeah. And the kicker was, I learned about Fruity Loops, and I had a PC, mm -hmm. right? But then I got a Mac, and Fruity Loops didn't work on it at all. So where, until recently. Like, that's the right. crazy part. 
And that's what led me over to the Reason game. Right. And yep. Reason was, Reason has been the way. Reason is fire. And that's when I, I started respecting other dolls because, like me, you know, I started with Magic Music Maker and then went to FL. Right. Then I went to the Phantom X6. Oh, you went to the Phantom. You went totally out. Yeah, so when I came back from Iraq um, the mm-hmm. first time, um, pretty much. You, you grabbed the Phantom out there? Well, you know, I wish. You put it in the context box. Hey, listen, <laughs> I wish I did, but the first the first deployment, man, I came back. That's a whole nother story. She brought some gold. I came back with no money. Oh. None. Oh. Courtesy of my one of my parents. Oh, no. Yeah, so oh. I came back with nothing. So, like, six, seven months later, I had got some money back. Mm-hmm. And I, that's what I went and got. Got I went you. and got me that Phantom X6, yeah. man, and I fell in love, man. I'm man, that's rolling. crazy. My brother had one, so yeah. I got I got a bunch, I got three brothers. Mm-hmm. And he had a Phantom, and we made this I, like you know I me. Mean? I don't know what I'm doing on that stuff, but I would go over to his house and I would just play. And he would just sample it in, right. get a Phantom and an MPC, mm-hmm. and like we made a couple songs, and I don't even know what happened to him. <laughs> man, that's when I was telling people like you had that sound card in the back, right? That card, man. I'm like, all oh, them sounds used to be on that. That one, and I think it was maybe 256 megabytes, or yeah, even yeah. might have been smaller. Right, they had the zip drives. Yeah, the zip drives that you put in them. Man, it was crazy. But I mean, Bruh. like that's when I Yo, fell in love with look, it. They gonna look at this like <laughs> they, they yeah. gonna be like, man, these these dudes, oh, yeah, bro, these they oh. But yeah, we uh, that that got me going. And but when I started understanding the rolling, mm-hmm. um, I was trying to find like. Something else. Then that's when I jumped to machine when I when I got stationed here in Quantico in 09. Yeah. And um Machine was crazy. It took a second for me to like jump over to yeah. machine. Cause I never could get you I, so my boy introduced me to the NPC at 04 mm-hmm. when we was in Cali. He lived in like um not Modesto, Barstow, California, like right. in the desert, bro, right. in a trailer. <laughs> like like off the fast in and the furious. No, it was crazy. Him and his mom and stuff. Shout out. Shout out to my boy Castillo, man. But he had a dope. I think it was. I, it was a MPC. I don't even know what number that joint was. Huge with a floppy disk. And I'm like, bro, like, what you about to do with this old ass floppy disk? He said, bro, this how I, this how I put my sounds in. Oh, so I was like, you still got one? Like, you still got the sounds? Nah, I don't got the sounds. He he probably he might have them. That would be crazy to have like yeah. the old Phantom sounds. He, yeah. They probably in a crazy format though. Yeah, they, yeah, because you know it's always in. it's always it's, it was like yeah, it was some <laughs> dot something. Right, it wasn't but, dot wave. No, it definitely <laughs> wasn't a wave. So yeah, man, um, that got me started, and I was just like, man, I can't get I can't get with this, and then the, the little screen on the MPC. So I ended up getting a machine, and the machine looked so user friendly yeah, to me. Yeah, the machine was crazy. It had a, it did have a big old screen. Yeah. So my homie got him. He got a machine, and he let me like play around. And I was on a computer. I'm like, it's the folder for all the sounds. Hmm. I got reason. Let's let me get the sounds. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> the sounds was crazy. The drums were ridiculous, yeah. bro. Them joints is crazy, man. Shout out to, or how they said it overseas, it's machina, but <laughs> over here we say machine. Right. But man, Native Instruments, man, they are crazy. Support this man, Native Instruments. Please send him. Please the the collector's edition. I need it all, man, because I'm definitely an advocate machine. I did. Native I did. Get, I fan. finally got the collector's edition. I finally got which that one? Thirteen or fourteen? The newest one. I finally yeah, got I'm, it. I bet you that. I was crazy. Waiting. The upgrade hit the hit a low price during the Black, Black Friday. Friday. I was like. Yep. <sighs> that's when I get my. That's when I get my plugins. And that's everything. the only time you got to do it. It's either Black Friday. Christmas yep. or New Year, July. Oh, July, Christmas in July. Okay, because that's when um uh, that's when. So what drives it is UAD. UAD mm-hmm. does it Christmas in July, and then everybody else is like, "Oh, they're selling plugins too." Like, I yeah. want to sell my plugins. Yeah. So you know, now coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah. They always have some dope um like sales too when you there. Where is it? It's in Cali. It's in Cali. At, uh, you Nah, I ain't gonna go this time. Yeah, it's gonna yeah, be the first you went last year. year. Yeah, I went like the last two, three years. Yeah, and I loved it, but at the same time, I was like, man, I got other stuff. Like I'm gonna be you in gotta Philly. Stay consistent with this podcast. Yeah, what you gotta I'm, do. And I'm gonna be in Philly. Yeah, Saturday okay. for a uh, podcon with Wallow. Right, right. You yeah. said you were gonna do that. Yeah. yeah. So he, I'm gonna be there. So it's like shameless plug. I got a podcast too. Yeah. It's called uh, I finally. Oh no, it's called I figured out I'm grown. Oh, really? Yeah. What it's about? 
It's about realizing and understanding what it's like to be an adult, who you are, and the decisions that got you there. Mm. Like the first episode is called Big Dumb Purchases. We talk about, yeah, we talk about like the dumbest big purchases we made. And we give me one. Um, I gotta give you one that's not in the episode. Uh, because we went through a few of them. Mm -hmm. One of the big, Dumb purchases. Um, ah, I can't do it. I can't. can't, do it. I'm, can't. I'm gonna give it away. Okay. But like, yo, it's when it, is it dropped? It has it dropped yet? No, it hasn't dropped. So okay. it's gonna drop this week actually. All right. So it should drop on Saturday, and that's gonna be the first episode. Mm -hmm. We're starting out straight audio. Okay. And then we're gonna go over and over, and then we're gonna yeah. build up the video. I'm actually proving to myself right now that it can be done. That I can do video. Yeah. And we're probably gonna get your editing. That, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I could have done yeah. that the whole time, right? Like, I got the cameras. But, yeah. you know, I didn't want to go too far without re be without being sure right. that this was going to be something I want to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's, I love to talk. Yeah. Like, we, we <laughs> I mean, it's been times where we'll just be here chilling. Right. And made, we probably made one or two, three beats. And then we're just chopping it just up. Just chill. Yeah. So, I'll tell you. So, coming off of that, I got the reason, right? Mm -hmm. And I was fooling with reason. And in high school... I was a part of this thing called Gallery 37 in Chicago. Okay, what's that? Where um, it, it was an art program for the, during the summer mm -hmm. to keep kids engaged and not bored and doing whatever else you're going to do yeah. when you're bored. And so... So they didn't have summer programs? They did, but it wasn't free. And yeah. Gallery 37, they was paying you. Like D.C. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So they're yeah. paying you to so do something. So during the summer, I was a part of Latin band playing congas and, and, and drum set. Yeah. And then... That next winter time, I got picked to do production mm -hmm. on all the recordings they did during the summer. So yeah. we got to go to Chicago Recording Company, record our songs. And, like, we did six songs. Those, those were all recorded. They were published. I got to work with this guy named June Moon, who was a producer for Janet Jackson. And we worked at CRC Studios, and we worked at Gallery 37 Studios to produce the album. Right. So, I, like, we went from start to finish producing an album during the during the school year, mm -hmm. which was crazy. And that's when I realized, like, oh, I like this. Yeah, this is what you want to do. And that that's also how Reason tied back in, because Reason was actually like working at a studio. You got the patches, you got yeah. all this stuff, you got the board. Like, whereas I was looking at Logic, and it was just like, eh, I don't know. It's not exciting to me. Yeah. Like, I like Logic. Logic's great. Pro I Tools. Yeah. Pro Tools was, is Pro Tools. Pro you Tools know? is... It's Pro know? Tools is Pro Tools. Yeah. Right? And like, that is what it is. Yeah. Standard. But, you know, and then GarageBand was just like, I would use it because it worked. <laughs> yeah, that was that was Logic Light. We call it Logic, Logic Light. Light. <laughs> yeah, Logic Light. So, and that's that took me all the way through high school, and I was playing the beats at the thing, playing the beats everywhere. Anywhere I got a chance to play some beats, barbershop, whatever, I'm just playing them, playing mm -hmm. these beats. People probably hate. They was terrible. They were horrible beats. Right. But to me, they were like everything. Everything. I made them with I my, hate my old beats, hand. man. Bro, my homeboy. He uh for my birthday, yeah. he printed out a CD of your old of joint? my old joints and brought it over here. I was like, oh man, never playing this. Did you play it? <laughs> I haven't played it yet. Okay, I'll play it after we get done. I'm, right. We're gonna see what it yeah, sounds like. We gotta check it out. And this from what? Because I what bought year? it. I had to buy a CD player because right. I don't have no CD player. Yeah, <laughs> that's so. So my uh my record player is like a five in one. It's a tape player, CD uh -huh. player, record player, Bluetooth, and then a radio. Oh wow! So yeah, I I had went to this um, record shop in Silver uh -huh. Spring and took my daughter and uh, I was like, oh snap, they got CDs. I was about to buy the Kiss of Death Jada Kiss joint for it was like six bucks. Oh wow! I was like, man, I'm about to start get collecting. So the CD player I bought over here is a Tas Tascam A500. Yeah. So the reason I bought it is because some of the CD players back in the day they used to have these the the the, um, the speed knob, mm -hmm. so I could play a tape and I could slow it down. Chop I could do up, some weird like stuff, screw, right? Yeah, yeah. Or not even just just get that real sound of like this is out of tune, right? Because you know we always tune to a four forty, but like mm -hmm. sometimes it feels better when it's flat. Sometimes yeah. it feels better when it's sharp, right? It's that but, feeling, you know. But like you can get that feeling. It's, it's grimy too because I got a bunch of uh, a bunch of tapes with my mom's voice on it, doing vocals, really? so I could sample that all day. I do it all the time. Yeah. Like there's a bunch of beats out there, like you wouldn't even know she just on the track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so. now that's fire. Yeah. That's fire. But that took me to all the way through high school. And then in high school, when I graduated, I got my first Mac. 
mm. MacBook Pro. It was my Mac. The yeah. other Macs weren't my Mac. They were the house's Mac. Right. But MacBook Pro, and I got an interface from M Audio, the the oxygen. I ain't never it seen had, that one. It had two mic inputs. Mm-hmm. It was a piano and a drum machine. Oh, dang. It was crazy. Like, they stopped making that show. <laughs> it was like, oh, the no, oxygen? we got to sell this shit separate. <laughs> yeah, the oxygen. Yeah, yeah, it was an oxygen 25. Okay. And I had two M-Audio uh, monitors, the little BX5s. And I dang. took that John to college with me, and right? The whole M-Audio setup. Yeah, that was my, it was, that was my, my um, graduation gift from this guy named Mr. Nunley. He was a teacher. Yeah. And he used to hear me all playing in beats all the time. I don't even know how this worked. Yeah. Like, I don't know if my mom paid for it. I don't know. Yeah. But, Somehow had you had something in college. And I was in college, and I had a Samson CO1 microphone. Mm. That shit was horrible. But hey, in did a you dorm put the sock room, on it? No. Nah. Okay. But in the dorm room, when you making money, because everybody else want to record, right? don't nobody care, because we don't know anyway. Yeah, we, we all testing it out. <laughs> we got the studio in the dorm room. Yeah, everybody going to your spot. Made some crazy songs. I can't even talk about them. <laughs> I got homeboys that are VPs now. I cannot talk Dang. about them songs at all. But, Trust me, they was crazy. But um, out there, so I went down to Alabama to Tuskegee for college. Mm-hmm. And I got intertwined with everybody that was making music. Plus, I'm balling because I'm playing football. Yeah. You know, that was my way to pay, right? Like, got to pay for college somehow. That was mm-hmm. my way. I just do what the coach says. They're going to give you a scholarship. Right. Right? Like, execute, execute, execute. That's it. That's it. So, um, one of my homeboys... I started recording with some kid, um, and he was a singer, and he was a great singer, but, you know, the bull, you know, we had to work together to get the songs together, mm-hmm. and we would go to Atlanta, come back, go to Atlanta, come back all the time, working with, like, some really dope folks, like, there's a guy named Pat, who's a, he's a manager, he was he was a manager for Jack Harlow, Uzi, all them folks, mm-hmm. worked with them out there, and then my homeboy, Jared, he used to take me up there to to uh to to Camp Creek, we would work with the hustle. You know, we work with them folks. Yeah. Uh oh. Light. <laughs> we just oh. lost the light. We we getting oh, them. Hold up. I gotta plug in. We getting them. I gotta plug it in. Hold on, hold on. Here oh, we go. Well, you ain't gotta pause. All right. Yeah, so my homeboy would take me up to Atlanta and we would go to mess with Grand Hustle folks. Mm-hmm. That's where I got to meet uh shout out to God, work with him, work with uh Dro. Um, Damani. Damani. Yeah. But, um, Young Dro. Young Dro. Um, Weezy. Mm-hmm. Producer. Weezy out of here. Yeah, yep. Weezy out of here. Like, we was exchanging sounds. That was cool. Um, Bryce, GFM. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know that guy. He's a New York Desk Tips nephew. Cousin? Something like that. I don't, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, and we would just be working because they had a studio in the basement. we go up there. we work, 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 work. But then we go, we went to Stankonia Studios. Yeah. We were working Shut in uh, Stankonia Outcast. <laughs> we worked in uh, where was that? Uh um what's the uh damn, because we was working with the Bulls that write for they used to write for Rihanna. Uh Rock Rock City. Rock City. Yeah. Tehran and uh, Yeah, yeah. We were working with his them. brother. Yeah. yeah. Yo, them they they are some workhorses. Yeah. That was at uh the artist factory. That's what it was, the artist factory out there. Right. And then I had a homeboy. We got to do a song with Two Chain um, by way of uh, of my homeboy. Um, damn, everybody's names are slipping out of my head right now. And it get like that, man. Yeah. <laughs> it get like that. But uh, we got a bunch of producer homies out there. Like mm-hmm. it was crazy. But my homie, uh, man, he did Duffel Bag. Uh, he did the beat for Duffel Bag. Yeah, with oh, Wayne man. and Two Chains. Yeah, he did that. Beat. Play a circle. Yeah, no, everybody. but that's not his. No, name. I'm saying play no. a circle yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and Wayne. Um. Damn, I want to edit in the right name. Yeah. Uh, and we'll put it in. No, 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 because I don't want to look like I forgot his name. Yeah. On, I mean. On the pocket. No, no, no. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> Let me look it up. Let me look it up. Uh, Let me look it up. Jesus Christ, because I could call him right Duffel now. Duffel Bad. He produced. Duffel Bad. M16. Yes, there we go. Yeah. Jesus Christ, I could not get there. Yeah, so 16. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, and then uh, my homeboy M16 who produced, like, we got to, we got the 2 chain by way, mm-hmm. by way of him doing a song called Old School Chevy. It's crazy. Yeah. Old School Chevy. Drop top. That shit was crazy. Yeah. And 16 did the beat and I, like, did some parts on it and that was cool. 
And then somehow I got connected with these guys up here in uh, Virginia, mm-hmm. um, Cupid Williams, and a homeboy that I had uh, out of out of St. Louis, now Alex Plutzer. We did the song with uh, uh we did we did a song with Waka Flocka, mm-hmm. now Cheese. Mm-hmm. I did that with Cupid, Cupid, mm-hmm. where I took the they sent me the beat, I added to the beat, I mixed the song. That shit's online. I don't get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> how how does that? Huh? Like how how does that work? Like, it was a it was a mixtape. Oh, okay. So I got paid to do like the mix. Oh, like back the mixtape. But like there. now that shit's on. Um, it's, it's streaming. It's, now. it's streaming. I don't. Yeah. You know it is what it is. I what I'm gonna do? Right. It's just a little bit. You gonna hear? I. Uh, uh, so I think it's like you you pay your dues here. And, like back then you pay your dues, but yeah. I think everybody now is like, nah. Yeah. I need mines off top. Yeah. I mean. Look, I was having fun. I was in college. Right. I ain't had nobody re- representing me. It was mm-hmm. just me out here making beats and having fun and yeah. recording people. And, like, shit was crazy, bro. So how you how you end up this way after college? So I went to grad school. Mm-hmm. Continued working, going back and forth to Atlanta, doing all the stuff I'm doing. I actually got sent out to California where I went work with this artist named Lenny Millones. Mm-hmm. Where I started doing like reggaeton, like I was like I was into it. Like, yeah. all right, shoot, y'all do reggaeton in Cali. I do reggaeton. I do anything. I will make any music. Right. Just give me a week to study it and listen, and I'm gonna come back better than the people that make it. You hear that? <laughs> give me a week. That's all we need. This, like, you know, because we we try to like immerse ourselves into the sound. Yeah. So like, um, that's how like even with me working with R and B artists, that's normally like R and B my thing. Right. I love R and B. I'm from Detroit. You right. know what I'm saying? But Everybody just so used to me just making trap beats. I'm like, no, I can make, I can make that. I can make yeah. uh, pop. I can make, you know what I'm saying? But it's like me just submerging myself into that that realm or that genre. Right. You know what I mean? And then after that, like, I make whatever. Right. And, and that's that's pretty much it. Like, and I, what I try to do is I listen to the mainstream mm-hmm. and then I try to go find like the underground is most never, nobody listening to this person. They got 17 views and I go listen right. to that. I'm like, all right, this is what the new people are doing. Right. So if we're going to make it, we're going to listen to them. We're going to listen to the, the, the mainstream folks are doing. And we're going to find a middle. And sometimes, like, there's a couple times where I, it's been like a fail, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I had to understand the swing of Brazil funk. Right. You know, it's a boom, da, da, boom, da, da, boom, da, Yeah. Da, boom. It's not on no like it's not on no four count. <laughs> it's on a it's on a four count, but there's a swing. Yeah. And it's not like a swing there. It's a there's a swing on the first two beats, mm-hmm. and it's a different swing on the first. Well, there's a f- swing on the first two counts yeah. of the four four, and then there's a different swing on the second one. On so the last two, yeah. And like you hear Sango, like the producer Sango, he does some crazy work with that song. But like you got to understand to the point where like I'll take the take one of those beats or take his beat now line my own drums up next to it just to see what's going on. Right. And it's like, oh, this is like a whole nother. So I ain't the only one that does that. Like, I, I literally will listen to, for instance, Drill. Yeah. Like the UK Drill. I, yeah, I listen to it and then I make my version <laughs> right. and then I put it together and see, like, because, you know, like, it's, what am I missing? What am I missing? What's there? What's not there? Right. Yeah. Like, exactly. I've done some drills. So like, I did, um, it was a podcast. I did the intro for the podcast. They wanted a drill type beat. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I ain't from UK. I don't do drill. All right, give me a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me a week. I'll listen to it. And I, I just dove in head first. Spotify algorithm all messed up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they like, he likes off. drill. Yep. Give him everything. I'm UK listening to drill. UK drill, France drill. Yeah. Drill from countries I don't even like. What language are you speaking? Whatever. It sounds you Don't cool. even know what Doesn't it is, matter. but it's it fire. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's fire. So. And that's that's what I would do, and it, and I, I got that that um, premise from one of my mentors. I got like three main mentors when it comes to the music that I yeah. do. Um, one guy is Carlos Pride. He's a amazing percussionist, mm-hmm. amazing producer, amazing mix art uh, mix engineer. He worked in New York, uh, did stuff with Talib Kweli, did stuff with a bunch of other artists, came back to Chicago. Yeah. One of my mom's best friends, and he's always been around. That's right. like, like, that's my guy. And then um, my cousin, Dave Rideau, he's got Grammys for mixing, period. I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah. For I think you, you showed me him. Yeah, yeah, I showed you. It's like, yeah. he, won't, he won't give talks because everybody will buy what he said talks about. Mm-hmm. 
But right. I asked him to be on the on the YouTube channel. He's like, look, I would do it. But every time I do something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I would go to I would go to Cali and you'll it's crazy to see where he mixes because it's mm-hmm. not like some big dumb studio. Right. Like it's even more like it's strategically placed panels to make sure that his sound is correct and amazing speakers. Like mm-hmm. I went out there, I heard the Westlake speakers that um they had like all the accolades and everything. Right. And like I'm listening to those. I'm like, damn, people are in the room. Yeah. Like it was crazy like that. Then he switched over to the PMCs. He's the one that told me I should, he's the one that put me on the Cali Audio. Yeah, Cali. She was like, Cali Audio. Yeah. Oh, please. <laughs> Nate, Nate, he's a great guy. Please. Nate, just just holler at Nate. Just, Nate's, just Nate's, hit a, me, man. Nate's Nate. a great guy. Nate yeah. is an amazing uh Owner of Cali Audio, mm-hmm. like I like, he is an amazing guy. He's come up with a good, crazy products. See, we got him in the background. Yep. You no, know, these are the IN five here. Oh no, these are the IN eights. Yeah, the eights, and they sound amazing paired with the sub. Um, they got some new subs out, but that WS twelve is crazy. I owe you a video. <laughs> yep. Um, but so, um, hit that sub hits hard. It's crazy. Um, so um, but yeah, so. The three mentors. That's how I got, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Your cousin. Carlos. Actually, it's two mentors. Two? two. Okay. So not and mentor. then, well, technically it's three, but he didn't come along until a lot later. Okay. And that's Kenny Gamble. Okay. But that was like a lot later. All right. Because that was like towards the end of my Philly time. Mm-hmm. So then I got up here to Philly because of the grad school program I was in. I want to make some money. You make more money in Philly than you would in California because mm-hmm. of the cost of living. Now, in hindsight, should have stayed my ass in California. Yeah. <laughs> it would have home- added up. Yeah. Because, like, I also have homies that are out there doing crazy stuff. My boy Killer B, Brian, he's out there killing it. Like, and I'm yeah. so excited for him. Every every freaking every freaking week, it's like, damn, you did that? Damn, you did that? He's like, come out here and party, man. Like, let's mm-hmm. go. I'm like, I'll be there as soon as I can get away from these crazy kids. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> nah, man. I can't get away from my crazy kids. Can't get I love away them. from them. I love them. Can't get away from them. All right, man. So but I'll be out there. That's that's all right. So you you <clears throat> you came to Philly. Yeah. In Philly, I got to work with amazing people, man. I was just, the list is like too long. Like everybody that I got to work with. Um the guy that there were two people that like pushed me into everybody. Mm-hmm. Two people that like brought me in, and then there was one other person that was like cosign that right. got me working with everybody. The first person was um, this guy named Kev. Be more Kev. Mm-hmm. Um, he's homies with uh, what's the boy? Ah man, what's the rapper from Tennessee? Uh, Yo Gotti. Yo Gotti. There you go. So, I would be all over the place with Kev to do stuff with Yo Gotti and him, but mm-hmm. I never got to produce for Yo Gotti. Yeah, never got to do that, unfortunately. But right. Kev believed in my music, and he would bring me around. We would go everywhere, and then we met this guy named Rico Vaughn. Who knew everybody? Mm-hmm. <laughs> just like everybody, just knew them all. And um, he linked me up with uh, this this female rapper named Lee Mason, and yeah. that, that was my home. That is my homie. She's like fire too. Yeah, she's crazy. Like yeah. like Mo's. Like y'all just gotta go listen to her, man. She is amazing, mm-hmm. and she's rapping again. Like she's back on it now too. Yeah. Like she's like, hey, I'm back in. So I sent her. I sent her a pack like a couple weeks ago. For real? I right hear. Have fun. Yeah. Because, like, she's not afraid of beats. Like, you know, there's a lot of artists, that They just want the normal shit. They want what well, they want. What everybody else got. She's not afraid of real beats. Right. Like, stuff that's, like, game changer type stuff. Yeah. So I said her a crazy beat. How you feel about that? Like, like when you're when you working with artists and they're, they're looking for this one sound, i.e. the industry sound, instead of going out and creating your own sound? I normally just give it to them. You know, but what I'll do is I'll merge some of the own, my own stuff mm-hmm. and make it lean closer to me than the industry standard because the industry standard is already being done. So, right, like if you're gonna do that, then why don't you just listen to this person? Yeah. Right. So, but but Lee got me around a bunch of folks. I got to work with uh um a bunch of people out in in uh 
It was a oh, damn. I can't remember the dude. It's been a lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> like you, a lot of people. Definitely worked with a lot like, of people. A whole lot of people. And then I got to open this studio down in South Philly mm-hmm. with my homie Max. We opened Sound Butter. Yeah. And Agile kicked the door wide open. Freeway in the studio. All kind of people in the studio. Right. I'm like, oh, this is great. And the only thing that killed that John was the building got sold. <laughs> Damn. And they sold that joint even though y'all was... We was in the building. They like, yeah, y'all gotta go. I'm like, but we successful and we paying. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't... We didn't have no problem. We had zero problems. Right. Like, we didn't have no fights. We didn't have any issues like that. Brent was always on time. Brent was cheap as hell. Yeah. Like, and uh, we were right across from uh, the, the big theater. Um, can't remember what it was, but we were on South Street across from the big theater. Mm-hmm. So... People, we would go over there while they're having performances, drop off the flyer, like, hey, y'all want to go record? Yeah. Come on over. So we would have anybody was that Met? was touring. No, no, it's the um, TLA. Okay. Yeah, so, or I don't know if it's called TLA anymore, but yeah. Live, Nation, Live Nation owns it now. You know, okay. They own everything. Yeah, they own everything. <laughs> so, and that studio is what got me to meet Idea, who, uh, it happened to be Kenny Gamble's daughter, and I didn't know that at the time. I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh, we're going to make music. She's cool. She's got a wild, like, ideas and shit. Like, right. we did her a whole album, find out, oh, wow, your dad wrote everybody's songs. Mm. Sheesh, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I got to work with Team Retro, which was really cool. Uh, they were some young kids that, um, they were doing, like, pop. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was right when, um, like, Hip hop was doing its thing, but that whole um, trap sound, yeah. the Diplo type of sound was popping, mm-hmm. and I really dived into that. I dove into that. Like I, I dove in. I was yeah. like, "This is cool. I like this. Like crazy sounds, crazy bass, mm-hmm. no samples, having fun. Right. All my music. So I dished that out. I had a bunch of songs. I did that. Um, the uh, the grapefruit song, mm-hmm. with Auntie Angel. <laughs> Yeah. Like, all of that stuff was out there, and it's just going viral, going crazy. My homeboy, uh, DJ Damage, we was mm-hmm. doing songs. We did the the Rihanna remix of Diamonds, because I didn't like Diamonds. Like, yeah. It was, I was like, Rihanna, like, bruh, that song is cool, but, like, you got that vibe. It was that 2012 type of vibe. Yeah. So I did a remix. We put it online. It got 500,000 plays. Universal was like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> Demonetized. That's, crazy. That's, cr- that's crazy, man. Demonetized. Yep. Then we did the uh, uh, Rolls All In My Neck. Mm-hmm. And there were two versions. Ours was the one that was viral, mm-hmm. but the video was the one that was on Worldstar. Right. So th- those dudes was beefing with us on the in the comments. I'm like, I don't care about y'all. Yeah. That Rolls All In My Neck. That Trinidad James Yeah, right? but we did the Fat Boy version. Yeah. Yeah, so that was me. Yeah. Right, so, and then... Cause I, I randomly go viral all mm-hmm. the time. Like, I don't even know why. I've been blessed. Yeah. Um. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's just notoriety. The Google Doodle song. Yeah. Like, that was just me having fun. Like, I I had um seen they did the little Les Paul Google Doodle and I started playing with it. I was like, oh, I can record this. Made a beat. Right. Called my homies in Auburn. They came, played guitars. We shoot a shot of music video. Yeah. <laughs> on, like, some stupid little handheld camera. Mm-hmm. Put it online. Next thing I know, Mashables got it up and then my homeboy sent it to Mashable. Mm-hmm. They put it up. Google reposted it on their Twitter. And then, like... Just went crazy. <laughs> yeah. Now, with that, man, like, how does it... How does it, like, work? Or not, not even how does it work. Just how do you just dive in into the creative space that you get into, like, songwriting and producing? Like, you're doing it all. I mean, even the setup now. Like, you know what I mean? You got yeah. cameras. You got everything. Like, how did you grasp all of that? The on concept? accident. Everything was on accident. Yeah. Like, I got cameras. I don't even know. So I had a T. I had a T seven I or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I just shot a video talking about reason. Yeah. And I was like, this is really great. This is what I'm doing. And I just was like, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel. And then my homie that owned the dealership was like, Hey, can you shoot videos for us? Right. I'm like, All right, no problem. So they're paying me to shoot videos for them. And then, like, I can use my music in the videos, and they're paying to put these videos out there everywhere. Right. So I'm my own sync. Right. <laughs> like, I'm syncing myself. Exactly. Every single time. <laughs> and, like, 
I mean, you can't you can't wish for a better situation than that. That, right. was, that was really cool. And that went on for like four or five years. Three mm-hmm. years, sorry. Three years. It went on for three years. 2017, 2018, 2019, 2021, 22. So five years. Yeah. 2022. No, 2020. Yeah, four years. I can't count today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it was it the creative space is just. I just go and do whatever comes to my mind. Mm-hmm. Like. I don't, like, some people start with drums, some people start with piano, some people start with melodies. I just, sometimes I just go click through sounds till something inspires me. Yeah. And then when I did have that lull, that's when I developed Hit Cubes. <laughs> Yo, if y'all don't know about Hit Cubes, <laughs> this is the guy. So if y'all seen me look like I was shooting dice in the studios, it was the Hit Cubes yeah. that he created. I was like, I looked at, I took took some time and I was like, how can I inspire or give myself inspiration at a moment's notice and it always work out. So I looked at the billboard charts and I was like, mm-hmm. all right, I could throw dice and get something random. Right. If I look at the billboard charts and I pull the top six tempos that repeatedly come up, I can use those tempos on a die. And I can say, oh, I'll use that tempo. And then I'm like, well, then let me have a, let me have a cube that tells me what genre to do. So I put my put the genres that I do on there. I think it was hip hop, soul, something else, reggae, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. Then I was like, all right, well, I need another cube that tells me like the keys or mm-hmm. like what I want to do. Do I want it to be a happy song or a soft song, mad song? Yeah. So that's how that came. And then the the the, the, the other cube was just, and then it was a set of three. And I'm like, nobody has three dice. <laughs> I need a fourth dice and we yeah. just called it the groove groove cube yeah. and it was just like random stuff like trap throw yeah. that on there or throw this on there or um, something yeah trap we got what else you got yeah here they go here they go this is this is the original set yeah. no colors <laughs> sample yeah got right, reggae right. Funk, sample. right half time three four for six eight which is me finding out that a lot of the R and B is in three four. Yeah, and I didn't know it. Ballad, like, it's crazy. Hip hop, pop, trap, EDM, house, R and B, like, like that was my first dive into like an actual product, EPs. like a hard product that that somebody could touch. Anthem, gloomy, hype, chill, <laughs> happy, soulful. The only thing that needs to change on these right now is the tempos. Yeah. Like, the tempos, I think they're kind of out now. You got 100 on there? Um, Do you have 100 ones? Actually, no. I got 150, 130, 86, 100, 120, Pretty much the the, the rounds. Yeah, Yeah, that's it. Pretty much the rounds. Like, well, now, you know, 167 is, like, where people are at with the whole Jersey bounce stuff. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's... And it's, it's, it's debatable for, like, Detroit beats. I do it in 100, but a lot of them do it in, like, 180. Right. Or 200. Right. You can always just step it down. Yeah. Pass up. Right. So, and that's, that's because I was, I I had done, I've made, I got so many beats. Like, I listened to Lamont Graves' thing where he'd be like, how many beats you got on your hard drive? How many beats are released? If I released every beat on my hard drive, man. Shout out to Lamont Graves, too. Yeah. He definitely. I want, I want to take his class. I told you that. I, want, I, I, did, want. I did the, uh, the sync, was it the sync one? Yeah. Yeah, I did the sync one. How was it? It was fire, man. Yeah. It's dope, man. And, um, I'm gonna do the one about the, the so instrumentals. Me, yeah, that's that's the one I'm interested in. Uh, I'm a little bit worried though because of how Spotify switched up everything. So yeah, but I mean, I look at I look at it like Spotify just one. Yeah, it's just one. It's just one. But um, you know, but when one falls, yeah, the and then it was will. crazy because Curtis King had a YouTube uh video that came out the other day with this uh, Jamaican boy who was like, "No, y'all don't get it." It's not that you got to get a thousand plays. They gave you a minimum sale, uh, like a, a minimum sales target. Like mm-hmm. you have to sell this much before I even pay you. Really? Like you work for you work for Spotify, basically. But it's crazy, man, because a lot of those <laughs> a lot of those labels, man, they they got equity into that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like yeah, that's why they're not making money mm-hmm. because seventy percent of the money goes to the label. <laughs> and I look at it like it's, it's all like a Ponzi scheme, man. It's like a scam because if if I'm with, um, I'm with a uh, what's Steve Stout joint United Masters, uh-huh. right? Yeah, you with TuneCore, somebody else with DistroKid, 
just think about how many people paying that yearly yeah, subscription paying to be up there anyway, right? You know what I'm saying? Right. Just to put your music out. Not, the only people that used to, to keep it up forever it. was like CD Baby. Right. Remember CD Baby, you could pay $35 and then mm-hmm. keep it up forever. Yeah. And Distro, Distro Kid, I think theirs is like $80 or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And then another thing, if you, me and you, I mean, with United Masters, you would TuneCore, whoever. In order for me to start collecting my my distribution that you make, I got to sign up with them Yeah, to get that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm with United Masters. I don't know how many times I had to, like... Well, that's to get it automated. Otherwise, yeah. you got to trust somebody to pull the numbers. Yeah. Which I think is better that they do it automated now. Because, mm-hmm. like, I don't have to ask you how much did you make off the song. Because there was one guy I did this song with, and he was cool, man. Cool, cool guy. But, like, I was... He went, He wanted to beat. He didn't want to buy it, and he didn't want to give me any, any like uh, percentage, no percentage words, on it. Yeah. The kicker was the beat was a sample of somebody very, very, very famous. Mm-hmm. So I ain't fight it because if it if it took off, I probably would owe somebody something. That's why I don't mess with samples too much. Or uh, you can use um, Tracklib. Yeah, well, this was before Tracklib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, and like, shout, shout out to Tracklist. <laughs> shout out to Tracklist. Yeah. We shout out to everybody. Everybody. And, uh, everybody, man. Glenn Levitt, we yeah. drink you. We drinking you, man. Yeah, we, come need, on now. we need some sponsorships. Yeah, it's 2024, <laughs> man. Right. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what brought me to Philly. And Philly was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a, such a good time up yeah. there. Um, moved down here during COVID, and that's when shit slowed down. Yeah. Because COVID, a lot of people got a chance to like, Dig in. But I had a one-year-old. I had a zero-year-old, basically. Yeah. She wasn't even one. New My born. first kid was born January 4th. <laughs> COVID. Right, be- right before right they before, announced it. Right, right before it hit. Yeah. Because it happened the the, the, the fall, the, the winter prior, like. Right. They, yeah, they knew like, about it in yeah. 19. Because Esquire like, had got sick at the studio. Oh, shit. Yeah, the whole studio got sick, and they had shut that joint down, like, November, October, wow. November. And and we didn't know what it was. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? And then, boom, January, February, March came. Yeah, and March. Say, yeah, March shut everything down. And yeah. it was like, well, that's it. Mm-hmm. I was still doing stuff at the dealership. Right. They wasn't close. <laughs> it was like, we working. Yeah. We going to deliver these cars. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that 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 kind of messed up a lot of stuff. So. Yeah. So, what, 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 um, coming off the COVID, you had a, a, a brand new baby. How does it work for you and having, like, work-life balance. It doesn't. It don't? It's it's hard. Yeah. Because I want to be a great dad. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I have to choose, like, am I going to go take this gig? Am I going to go fly out here? Am I mm-hmm. going to go do this photo shoot? Or am I going to play with my kid? Because, right. But then it always turns out to be like, all right, I got to go do this. Because, I mean, I've always, I've, I've been blessed to not, have to be struggling, right? Right. Like, that's been a blessing mm-hmm. my whole life. In fact, because of how I grew up with my mom and gigging and everything, I realized, like, I'm not about to go major in music. No. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be an engineer, have a paycheck, budget my, my, budget my life so I'm good. Right. So, not saying that I ain't want to hustle, but, mm-hmm. like, that was the hustle. Yeah. Because now I have time and now I have funds to do what I want to do. And you got a you got a dope partner, right? Your yeah. wife, right? Exactly. That holds it down. Yeah. So and like I can't do nothing without her. Right. right? So it's not like a work life balance. It's just I work when everybody sleep. Yeah. Because I definitely <laughs> come over here every time at night. I don't think I've been over here in the daytime. In the daytime, I'm not doing nothing. Nope, in the daytime, daytime I, is all working. Nope. You know, and like I'll meet clients on the weekends. Mm-hmm. You know, in the daytime. And I'll get what they want to get done or we'll make the plan and then we'll go finish it. Right. Right. But like I'm not like I'm not gonna neglect my little people. Yeah. Because they deserve the best. And kids mean everything, man. They they are the future. And I can't wait till they care. I don't have to pay for that no more. Man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Shout out to not paying daycare Bruh, no more. Daycare is crazy. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy, man. But um so but YouTube is popping, and as you can see, that birthday song is going crazy. Yeah, that's right. And people crazy. don't even know I did it. Right. That's the funny part. My friends are like, 
Wait, that's your name? Ben Ford on the track. Yeah, bro. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Bro. That's me. Yeah. That's my homegirl and me. And we've done a bunch of songs together. Mm-hmm. But um, she hit me up like, hey, I want to make this song full out. I'm like, deal, let's do it. Right. And that John is doing numbers. Yeah, that joint fire. So that's did you hear the, um, the remix I did? Now you sent me the, I think the original that you sent me, I think on Google Drive. Whichever oh, one you sent yeah. me on Google Drive. So we did the remix. Um, we're pro- I'm probably going to ask to like re- put it up again. Because mm-hmm. I think uh, with the right push, we can make it go even further. Yeah. Oh, the DJs love it. Yeah. So, but that, that, that was a, that was like a mind, mind, mind blown. Like, yeah. With this birthday song. Like, why are we just making birthday songs? Right. And that's what made me start oh, thinking too. I went to school. So the guy that, um, Jeremy Felton, mm-hmm. or what's, what's, what's his, what's his name? Jeremiah. Right. Mm-hmm. So Jeremy Felton, he went to my high school. And so I remember, I remember when he, uh, when he made that, the birthday sex song. Yeah. Right. We, he came up, he came over to the crib. We was in the basement listening to beats. Right. Mm-hmm. And my mom was like, Made that birthday sex song. She she's a uh, she was a teacher. She and the kids were like going crazy at her school. And she's like, "Yes, I'm like, Mom, chill, bro. Like, yo, yeah. it's a great song. It's on he on the radio. Yeah, he tried to look out a bunch of times, man. Like, we tried to work out, work mm-hmm. work on some stuff. Yeah, man. I mean, the 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 relationships that you build, man. It's just it's always gonna be it's endless, yeah. especially when you're a good person. Right. And that's the thing, like, ever since I've known you, you've been a, a, a dope supporter, a helper, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, anything I say, hey, bro, like, uh, like what you think about this? Come on over. Let's, oh, let's figure it out. By the way, shameless plug for him, the PTSD pack. It's crazy. Yeah. Just, just did this beat on uh, Instagram where I sampled uh, Cry Me River, and the only sounds I used were the PTSD. I appreciate that. Yeah. PTSD is out right now. If you don't have it, Hit me. That's a funny <laughs> statement. PTSD yeah. is out. Post traumatic street drums. <laughs> right. Because they're going to be like, PTSD? Post traumatic street yeah. drums. Yeah. Post traumatic street drums, volume two. And I got volume one. Yeah. But volume two, I really like dove in and was trying to create sounds. Now like, you can just splice these together. You can splice this video mm-hmm. with the beat. Yeah. Yep. You're going to do that. You're welcome. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. But yeah, man. Um, the relationships, man, I always, always felt like the money going to come. Yeah. I ain't worried about that. You, you just got to work, man. It's Consistency is what it is. Mm-hmm. Like, consistency is key. I watched a couple friends of mine on YouTube go from, um, like, 10,000 followers to, like, 500,000 followers. Mm-hmm. Andrew Masters. Really? Yeah, that's a cool guy. Yeah. Like, I talked to him on the phone for hours. Literally, hours. Yeah. And he stayed consistent. See where he's at. Yep. Right. And you see me, look, this episode 11. Most people don't even make it to 10. So good Man. job. Man. It's, and it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. You know what I'm saying? I just like talking about whatever. It's it's just us kicking shit. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Talking about whatever, how we came up, things of that nature. And um, the best part is it's always at the end because it's always about the gym class. G E M. Like what gems can you give a person? Yeah. You know consistency. What I'm consistency, consistency, consistency. Look at that. Like quick gym class just popped in. That's it. Consistency. Like you make your your sound like oh, here's one. Never play a beat for somebody that's not finished. Facts. Or mixed. Mixed is Debatable. Debatable, right. Because if it's on your speakers, yeah. it still might sound good. Still going to be cranking. But, like, if you're not finished with it, mm-hmm. don't play it. And let's say you're a producer homie. Then right. you play it. But, like, clients never play an unfinished beat. Yeah. Ever. You hear that? Play that unfinished beat. Like, oh, I was making this. Nah. Mm-mm. Yeah. I don't want to hear it. Don't do it. Play it's- something that's finished. And then, you know, nobody's going to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself. That was one of the things me and my homeboy, uh, Jared, like, we kind of figured this out. Like, when we're in the studio and we playing beats, we got to get hype on our beats. Yeah. No matter what they are. Mm-hmm. Because the room ain't going to get hype unless if we hype, ain't hype. Yep. And I learned that in beat battles. Yeah. 
I can be sitting back all cool and trying to be. No. But if you're not, you not in your own beat, the crowd ain't gonna be in it either. The only person that needs to believe in your beat is you. And when you show the expression of how you believe in your beat, and it and it's and 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 it's genuine, it will be infectious to the room. Yeah, because people gonna they're gonna pick up that. But yeah, but man. Those that those are the real gems. Those that first one to never play stuff, that came from mm-hmm. Carlos. That came from him direct. Like, never play that. Right? Like, you wanna make sure that people are hearing you at your best. Right. So a finished beat, even if it's not your best beat, is still a great beat. Still a great beat. That's why I don't have throwaways. I have throwaways. I, I delete them. I, I, don't, I don't even delete oh, them. Oh, throwaways, like, I'll just get, yeah, oh, yeah, no, 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 I delete bad beats, though. I yeah. hit the delete button. Like, I'll be like, in the middle of it, this sucks. <laughs> yeah. So, like, if 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 I like something in it, I keep it. Yeah. I keep it. And then I go back and, and, and get, like, re- retuned it or whatever later on down the road. But, because I, I don't know how many times I lost so many beats, man, from switching from HP to Mac to... Oh, hard so drive. That's the other thing. That's a gem for you right there. Back up everything. Back yes. it up. So I got like my beats are backed up online. Google Drive. Hard drives. Yeah. They on my laptop. Because mm-hmm. I'm I'm not losing no beats. I'm yeah. not losing them. I'm not I, losing no sound. I pay that that extra money for that iCloud. Look, and then like I don't trust that. Yeah. Right. But like, I got Google Drive. So I got three Lacy's. Right. That's what I'm about to say. I got <laughs> I got a, a four ter I got a 40 terabyte. System down here yeah. where I'm just saving everything. My, my my laptop is backed up to it, to one hard drive. I got another hard drive that's rated. Mm-hmm. I got another hard drive that's backed up to another one. I got a time time machine hard drive. Cause I've lost music in the past and like and not even like whole music. It was one time when like Reason was corrupting a lot of the files on accident. Yeah, and some of those I was never able to get back. Most of them I was able to get back, but. Mm-hmm. Like, that one time, there was a couple of them that were, like, crazy beats. And it was just, like, they gone. Right. And you some, can't get them back. You can't get them back. And if you can't play them back, you ain't going to remember. And you can't remember them either. Because you got so many. Because you make so many. Yeah, so. Yeah. Those are my gems. We're like that, man. Um, ladies and gentlemen, to the left of me, this is Ben Ford. It's my homie. Producer um, Ben Ford, everywhere online. Producer everywhere. Ben Ford. Dot com, all of that. All social media platforms. This is the guy you need to get in contact with. If you need anything, cameras, visuals, sounds, or just media. A, media. Yeah, he's the media guy. Period. You know what I mean? Um, hit him up. But again, man, appreciate you, bro, for letting me come in your spot, in your crib. Um, and we shoot this. And we made it to the end of the batteries, too. Yeah. Because that we made thing it. is flashing. <laughs> yeah, we made it. We made it. Dude, uh, like, how long is it going to be? We made it. I see it. Is it that little red joint? Yeah, they both yeah. flashing. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. And like that, we gone. Peace. Oh, the new merch out. Go hey, get it. Go get the merch. Go get the merch. Go get the merch. Relationships, Relationships worth more than money. Podcast. Yes. Let's go.